Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Making It Big Season 7. I am your host A.B. Ravi. I cannot help but praise the fact that doing business seems to be more pronounced among the natives from Marwar and Gujarat. Entrepreneurship and risk taking seems to be an integral part of their DNA. And what really surprises me is that quite often people from both these communities may be going through rough patch, trying to make both and meet, yet most of them would prefer to do some odd trading businesses than work for someone else. The story of this week's episode is similar. Suresh Kumar Puddar, hailing from a Marwari family, grew up in Kolkata in a joint family consisting of 19 members. The family was going through a hard time and yet the only path they decided to pursue was that of entrepreneurship. They chose to trade in synthetic leather. It was one long struggle but thanks to SK Poda's business acumen, they saw light at the end of the tunnel. He single-handedly transformed decades-old trading business into a formidable manufacturing company. Today, Mayur Unicotas makes artificial leathers which go into making footwear, car upholstery, bags and leather goods. This listed company has handsomely rewarded its shareholders. Many of them have become karodpatis. Take a look at my Unicota story and you will realize the road to success is hard and long. So don't lose hope. Be at it. Age has not slowed him down. For somebody who turned 70, he has a spring in his step and purpose in his voice. Suresh Kumar Podar, the man who built Mayur Unicota single-handedly, continues to push the envelope and his efforts show. two decades, Mayur Unicotas has emerged as a dominant manufacturer of artificial leather in the country. Established in 1994, this listed company presently operates two plants in Jaipur, Rajasthan with an installed capacity of 3 million linear meters per month. The company's plants use some of the industry's cutting-edge technologies like the latest release paper transfer coating technology. Output from these plants find their way into a number of industries. In the footwear industry, it includes shoes and sandal uppers and insoles. The company's products are also used for car upholstery and interiors, and furnishings and fashion wear and apparels that include purses, belts, jackets, and sports goods. Mayur has a dominant presence in the B2B segment with some of the biggest names as its clients. This includes Maruti Suzuki, Hyundai, Ford, Chrysler, Bata, Paragon, Liberty Footwear and Cardams. A bulk of the company's turnover, around 75%, is accounted for by the domestic market, but an impressive 25% comes from the highly competitive exports market. Within the domestic market, the biggest money spinners for the company are segments like footwear and car upholstery and interiors, which contribute around 75% to the turnover. We have never, never believed in having a single product in the basket, so we have a mixed bag in the entire basket. I think so, brand is one thing, trust in quality and good R&D, developing new product, understanding the customer requirement and satisfying that requirement is one of the main criteria for that. In each of the segments it operates in, the company faces tough competition from the likes of Polynova, Jindal Polycoats, Jayesh Industries, Penoplast and D-Decor. Yet, Mayur has been able to command a premium for its products. This is largely because of its strong R&D, which has allowed the company to crank out innovative designs and products regularly. In fact, Mayur is credited for pioneering white material for shoes in the country. In addition to a novel product range and nimble footedness, what has given the company a distinct edge over the competition is its robust supply chain. Translated, 
This means higher margins and return ratios. And it shows in its financials. Witness this. Between 2011 and 2016, the company's turnover rose from 249 crore rupees to 511 crore rupees, registering a CAGR of 12.8%. The net profit during the same period grew from 25 crore rupees to 83 crore rupees, recording a CAGR of 22%. This higher margin is mirrored in the company's stock price, which is currently ruling around 340 rupees. Thus, any person who had invested 1 lakh rupees in the Mayur Unicoters IPO in 1994 would be richer in 2017 by 6 crore rupees. So how did the company come into being? Suresh was born into a trading family. Between his father and uncle, they had a 15 children family who were into the distribution of artificial leather. Suresh entered the family business soon after doing his BSc. He was exceptional, quickly learning the ropes of the artificial leather business. Also, quite early in his career, he demonstrated how he could use his social charms and soft skills to win business for the company. Many attribute his success at winning big clients like Bata in the face of tough competition from players like Bohr Industries to his persuasive skills. What changed his fortune was his association with the proprietor of the National Leather Company. The company's founder, Mr. Kantibai, was so impressed by SK Podar's skill that he not only appointed Suresh as the distributor in Kolkata, but also inspired him to think big. This mentoring saw Suresh attend a leather fair in Germany every year to keep in sync with the latest in the leather world. Net net, these groundings helped him to get into the manufacturing space. Thus, in 1983, he set up Mayur Industries in Jaipur to make the door pads for Maruti Suzuki. This was followed by setting up of another factory to cater to the footwear sector. company's products gaining good acceptance in the domestic market, Podar turned his focus to the global market. And Mayur Unicota started exporting to Sri Lanka, Mauritius and South Africa. But what sets Mayur apart is that this is the only company from India, along with LG of Malaysia, whose PVC leather products are accepted by automotive OEMs like Chrysler and Ford in North America. It is already a tier 3 supplier to US based seat makers like Magna Seating, Johnson Control and Lear. With the Indian economy growing at a faster clip, there is a rising demand for the company's products from footwear, auto and the furnishing sector. To meet this growing demand, it is rapidly expanding. It is already in the final stages of talks with the Madhya Pradesh state government to set up a polyurethane plant with a capacity of 6 lakh linear meters per month. The company is also exploring plans for setting up a new facility in Karnataka. Impressed by the growth plans and financials, private equity players like Westbridge Capital and Malabar Investments have invested in the company. See, the reason we invested in Mayu Unicoders uh, in the beginning was that we were looking at the footwear space and we thought that uh, there was a lot of opportunities in footwear in India. But as we did our research, we found that many of the footwear companies were sourcing that material from this one supplier, and that was Mayu Unicoders. And so that made us in intrigued, and we started to look into Mayu Unicoders. And as we did that, we were amazed to see that the company had phenomenal economics. Uh, we saw that it had return on equity and return on capital north of 40 or 50 percent. And over the years, it was able to grow at very handsome rates. Um, not only was it able to grow, but also as the raw material prices were increasing, it was able to pass on those 
cost increases and still hold on to its margins. So we found that this company that had uh, very high return ratios was growing upwards of 30% year on year, was available at less than 10 times trailing, trailing P. And in the beginning, we couldn't even believe it. So that we did a lot of research, we did spend a lot of time to get comfort with the economics and the fact that they're sustainable. And after that, we, we invested uh, in the company. In the past two decades, Mayur Unicotas has grown manifold from 2.5 lakh linear meters per month to 3 million linear meters monthly. Going by the company's growth plans, the future seems even more spectacular and promising. On that note, it's time for a short break. When we come back, CNBC TV 18's A.B. Ravi talks to S.K. Podar, CMD of Mayur Unicotas, to understand his game plan for the company and also decode his success mantra. Also joining us on the show is Sandeep Uppal of HSBC. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Welcome back. For over 50 years now, he has been living, breathing and thinking artificial leather. I caught up with SK Podar, CMD of Mayur Unicote at his factory in Jaipur to find out how he intends to double the company's turnover to 1000 crore rupees by 2020. This is what he has to say. Take a look. Mr. Prudha Sandeep, welcome to the show. Mr. Prudha, if I may begin by asking you, your family was traditionally into distribution of artificial leather. So what gave you the confidence to get into manufacturing and where did the idea come from? You see, when I was doing a trading, hmm. I used to visit a lot to Italy, which is the main hub of fashion. Okay. And when I go there, I used to go every year one time, in mm -hmm. during 90s and late 80s. And I find there is a huge difference in the quality of what India is producing and what they are producing. And since I was in this line from the, my years of 16, I knew the whole India's market. Okay. So I told to myself that why don't we make a good quality, okay. which we can sell here. So that has initiated me that I want to make a European quality. So product. in terms of manufacturing, what did you start first? Was it the order from Maruti that would set up your factory or something for footwear? When I started manufacturing, I should say first order from Butters. Because when I was doing trading, I was well involved with Butters. Okay. So previously I was selling for as a distributor to my principal manufacturers. So within three months, you know, 80% of the business has been transferred to me. Okay. So you can say I started my career in the beginning also with Batas and when I started this factory my first sale was to the Batas. Which was the biggest turning point of your life? Was it Mr. Kantiba who influenced you? What was the Maruti order? First my turning point was of course having a distributorship from Kantibai of National Leather Cloth okay. in uh, Eastern India. Okay. That was my first turning point. And then second turning point you see, I used to go to Maruti a lot for selling this leather cloth for my principals. But they say they don't want anything because they are importing the whole seat. And they told me since I was visiting so many times and they were seeing me that I am going away without business. So why don't you start making a door panel? Okay. And that time I didn't know what is the manufacturing. I didn't know I'm of the manufacturing. So, but I just had a courage and I said, okay, I will start manufacturing. I believe in sometimes in 1997 you were thinking of exiting the business completely, selling out of a business. Why did that thought come to you and what made you come back to business? Again, what was the turning point there? In 97, my position was I was in 5 crore rupees loss oh. in 97. And I said, I cannot bear it, I should sell it. One of my astrologers in Calcutta, oh. and I was very close to him whenever I do anything, I asked him. So I said, I am willing to sell this company because I am no more in a position to bear the losses. He said, no, Mr. Pudar, you cannot do it. You just wait for two years for me. And then you see this import has started coming. You are a very good astrologer. <laughs> whatever, I don't know whether it was fluke or whatever, but this has happened with me. It's a true fact. Where does artificial leather score over the natural leather? Is it pricing? Of course, people prefer natural leather, 
but the price of natural leather and price of the synthetic leather we call it synthetic leather artificial yeah, synthetic, leather yeah. at least 5 to 6 times the price difference is there like genuine leather if you use for upholstery it is 125 to 130 rupees square feet and, and in pvc in 15 rupees or 20 or say 25 rupees square feet you can best get best of the quality so which is more durable you see nowadays the quality of pvc leather has improved so much if i talk 10 years back mm -hmm. if the quality was here now it is here now sometime we get uh, you know confused mm. when we see the product whether it is uh, synthetic product or uh, leather until unless you see on the back side when you see fabric then you understand yes this is the artificial leather so now the quality has also improved a lot okay you have competition in every segment in automotive in footwear in garments in furnishings so what is the edge your company has over your competition in every business there is a competition you will not find a single business where there is no competition True. now i read long back that uh, jack welch book hmm. he said that if you want to make money you have to either number one or maximum number two in your business Correct. otherwise you can't make money so now to become number one what you have to do you have to have some different product than what people are doing at the moment <coughs> that means you have to the business means always see foresighted today i have to think what is going to happen after five years or ten years if i do that now then it will give you the result my theory is that you have to do something out of box then only you can make money and for that you have to make a big gamble like five six years back i started selling to usa and nobody can imagine to selling in usa automotive industry from india okay let me get sandeep in sandeep here is a man who self made as a banker what's your impression the first uh, take ravi as we heard from uh, mr poda's story uh, what strikes me is how simple he makes it sound yeah but how uplifting it is at the same time so if i just look at uh, what has been created out of mayur is really goes down to the fact that mr podar has a very deep insight of the industry which goes back to f for 50 years yeah. so he knows it from the distribution perspective he knows it from the manufacturing perspective and he knows it from the end consumer perspective secondly uh, we can clearly see mr podar has had a lot of foresight so he's never stood still so as a distributor he moved into manufacturing he didn't stop at manufacturing for uh, footwear but he also moved into auto with an auto he said he moved into exports and now he's talking about pu so i think it's a combination of just using the experience and the foresight which has created a really good business model for the company yeah sandeep i was to ask you uh, as a banker you were to do a swot analysis on this company what it would be so strength clearly is uh, mr podar's insight of the industry which he's gained for the last 50 years without getting distracted into any other field uh, it's a b2b sector so again they work very closely with the the customers and again there's a massive amount of trust there quality is immense so that's a big strength uh, as far as opportunity is concerned if you see 75% of their output goes into auto and footwear yeah. and both are growing tremendously at the moment and expected to grow for the next uh, five ten years yeah. so that provides them tremendous opportunity they've had a good shot at exports as mr poda was saying earlier they exported to the us so they now have the confidence to produce of that quality and to market it in the developed world so that throws up further opportunities as far as threats are concerned uh, it will come down to product obsolescence because yeah. clearly uh, we are seeing a lot of new products because these are not natural so because they're chemical based there's a lot of innovation happening both in asia and in europe so it's very important for companies like uh, mayur to stay at the top of the game as far as technology is concerned so as far as weakness is concerned uh, i can't see any apparent uh, weakness coming out of the company other than the fact that uh, it's a company which is in quite a niche and a narrow field so it will just have to ensure that it just stays focused on that because there are not too many options to go on either side of this product range. Okay, do you believe in luck or God? What do you believe in? There is nothing called like luck. 
गीता में भगवान कृष्ण ने क्या कहा है कि अपना कर्म किए जाओ फल की चिंता मत करो करेक्ट तो नाउ इन मॉडर्न डेज पीपल विल से कि व्हाट आर यू टॉकिंग विदाउट रिजल्ट व्हाई आई शुड वर्क सो देन यू सेड दैट रिजल्ट इज इन नॉट इन योर हैंड इन योर हैंड इज टू वर्क ऑनेस्टली एंड विद द जिल द रिजल्ट गॉड विल गिव सो आई बिलीव दैट my job is to work hard work as best as possible and then it depends on god okay going by own life story what does it take to succeed in business if you were to look at your own life story if you want to succeed i say only one thing there is no substitute for hard work okay and you have to be focused and all the times there should be fire in your belly, belly. that i have to do this until unless you have that fire you cannot reach anywhere it's a fire which takes you you know it's willingness which takes you to a certain height wo har waqt the day your fire goes i think one should retire so fire in the belly is the mantra yes okay mr poda thanks for being on the show thanks sandeep for being on the show thank you very much thank you That is SK Poda sharing his dreams and goals. Let's look at the mantras he implemented to build Mayur Unicorters. You need to have fire in your belly. Never stop thinking of new possibilities. Need to have razor sharp focus. No risk, no reward. That is nothing like luck. Interesting mantras those. What fascinates me about SK Poda is that one stage in life he was seriously thinking of selling his business because of a huge loss. but he decided against it on a soothsayer's advice and it proved beneficial before i go here is an interesting quote from bruce levin and i quote him behold the turtle he makes progress only when he sticks his neck out on that thinking note it is time to say goodbye keep watching cnbc tv 18